Hey guys, Bill coming back at you again with another video. I uh, got lots going on today. We're going to be transplanting our strawberry kush to in, into soil with organic amendments and to into deep water culture hydro bucket. We're also going to be harvesting all the blue cheese autos, the inside and the outside. And we'll also take a look at the freak show inside and out and see how they're making out. Okay guys, so let's go back a couple of days and uh, we're gonna be harvesting the outside blue cheese auto. Okay guys, so here are the blue cheese auto flowers outdoors. Uh, first time growing autos outdoors. They're eight weeks into flower and they are finished. So they're coming down today. Now I'm gonna record this. Uh, it'll be a few days before I do my main video. So I'm not gonna talk about the uh, freak show right at this moment, but we're basically just gonna take down these plants today. They've all foxtailed just a little bit, probably from the extreme heat that we've got here. So even today it's uh, 33 with a humidex of 40-ish. Yeah, it's pretty warm for them. But they've grown pretty good. I was curious how they would grow outdoors where they have a dark period as opposed to indoors where they I usually give my autos 24 hours of light. So uh, yeah, a little bit fluffy because of the foxtail. Not as dense as I would like, but still really nice buds. Especially this center one here. This, this center one is just fantastic completely covered with trichomes so let's just get right down to it because it's really hot out here i'm going to hand off the phone to robert bobby and uh, he's going to record while i chop them down he didn't have much training to them at all basically just kind of let them go i did take one bud off yesterday that i had found some powdery mildew on so it was right there so i took that off and discarded it i don't see any other powdery mildew anywhere so um we should be good to go now some people do like to wash their outside plants i'm not going to bother uh, i can see there's a few bugs on here but i can take them off when i'm uh, trimming them up no big deal i'm sure we've all smoked plenty of bugs and if we knew how many bugs were on our food when we eat it we would uh, probably never eat anything again so yeah it's actually got it's got a little bit more weight to it than i thought it would have but that's probably mostly this the main stock here this one's got a really nice blueberry uh, terpene profile to it it's the most blueberry out of the three I'm just gonna hand that off to my buddy there and we'll go ahead and get the next one pull this tie off here all right now this is my favorite one this one has the most uh, most crystal on it really forgot to do the bouquet shot with the other one but really nice looking colas there i don't know if you can get a close up there of the buds see the see the trichomes there really sticky overall nice nice looking plant nice looking plant and uh it might be the way to go in a climate like this where if you let it go into the fall, I mean, I had a little powdery mildew as it was. I can't imagine how much would be on it in the fall when the humidity's up. We'll hand this one off. Now this one here doesn't seem to have the, the amount of trichomes as the other two. Uh, I was kind of hoping it would um, get some more. I mean, it's, it's covered, but it's just not near as noticeable. And anybody that says, well, they're not ready yet because they still got the white hairs. That's the foxtail. Um, that's the foxtail. I don't go by by the uh, the looks alone. I go by what the trichomes tell me. Uh, the trichomes are probably 90% cloudy, 5% amber, and probably another 5% clear. So that's that's right where I want it. So, uh, yeah, nice nice big cola there. It's just not near as dense as I would like. So there we have it, guys. We have the harvest of the blue cheese auto flowers outdoors. And uh, next we'll go in and we will harvest the indoor blue cheese and see what kind of difference we have. So I'll see you inside. So now that we have that done, uh, let's take a look at this blue cheese auto. She's ready to come down as well. And also the same as the outside, it has a bit of foxtailing going on as well. 
Now, the buds on her are uh, much denser than the ones outside. Not bad at all. And uh, really nice blueberry terpene profile on this girl. And the trichomes are pretty much in the same spot as the outside ones. Now, I figured this one would be done earlier because it's under 24 hour light, but it's taken the same amount of time to mature. Now, one thing you'll notice up top here, and I left this this way, uh, I left the light at those at the same height now this is one thing you can look for to see if your plants are too close to the light uh, it'll start to bleach the very top and uh, turns it completely white so like I said I didn't bother lifting the light or turning it down once I noticed that I just left it go so that I could show you guys uh, one of the effects of having your lights too close and also the foxtailing is a little bit more pronounced up here as it is on some of these lower ones uh, where it still has foxtailing going on but not as pronounced. So that being said, let's get out with the clippers and we're going to take this one down. Okay, so we have it up on the table here and uh, definitely bigger overall than the outside ones any of the outside ones now this one also had some lst done to it you can see the pipe cleaners down below here which we'll be taking off right now uh, but also there's a lot more on the side buds now we we could have probably got the same results or similar to the same results outside if we would have lst those ones down as well but we didn't we just let those ones go these are fed they were both used the uh, kryptonite organic living soil uh, just add water we didn't add any nutrients to any of these plants through the whole grow just water and uh, you can kind of tell she's pretty much used up the nutrients and because uh, we started having a few deficiencies there closer to the end but that's that's all we needed that was the full life of the autoflowers in a five gallon pot so not bad at all that's the kryptonite organic living soil as far as this grow uh, compared to the outside this one is definitely by far the biggest and the heaviest so let's go ahead and we'll take her down and there we go now that's a, a much better um, bouquet shot than the ones outdoors the outdoors ones had the really nice main cola but the rest of the the rest of the buds were not a whole lot on them. They weren't bad size, but they weren't they weren't filled in like this. This had a little better light on the side branches due to the LST, and that made a huge difference. So uh, definitely more weight in this one than any of those inside. Now these are from seed, mind you. Different phenotypes, of course, definitely play a part in it. But just in general, this is just a much bigger, more well-produced plant. So I'm going to go hang this up with the other ones. And uh, I'm going to try to get a weight on all of these. And uh, just to compare what we got with this with this uh, experiment. All right, so now we got all the blue cheese down. Now we can get a better look here at the freak shows. Uh, we got all four are trimmed up. I was going to flip these this week. But I think I'm going to give them one more week because I just got around to uh, training, defoliating, and lollipopping these two just a few days ago. Uh, things have been really hectic around here. So I finally just got around to that. So I want to give it one more week uh, just to let everything kind of bounce back and get into a good place. And then we will be flipping next week. Now, as far as uh, pot size, we still have the two in the seven gallons right here. We have this one she's still got quite a bit of bush i pulled a lot out of her but she's still fairly bushy and then we have this one here which is also in a seven gallon fabric pot uh, beautiful plant now over here we have in the three gallon pots you can see the difference in the size on the bottom there these ones fill out the trays these ones don't these are also on uh, three inch styrofoam blocks so uh yeah we have these two over here these are in three gallons and they're not much difference at this point um now i did kind of train them out to be around the same size so it's really hard to say how they're going to finish up but uh, my money is still on the seven gallon pots i still think they're going to do a, a little bit better than the three gallons we'll have to see how that goes 
Uh, let's go check out the one outside, the mother plant of these, which we planted outside a couple of months ago. Let's go check it out. Okay, guys, so here we have it. We have the Freak Show. Now, you can tell something's a little bit different there. Jess, come on. And uh, well, what we've done is we've moved the table that was here with the auto flowers that we harvested the other day. And uh, what I did was I put this post in back here, this metal post. And you can see a twine run into it to the tree, to the plant. So what I did is just slowly I've been coming out every couple of days and pulling that down and uh, bringing the whole plant down because it was just getting too high. Now I could probably pull it another, another little bit today, but I'm just going to let it go for today. I don't want to pull too much and end up snapping it off. Now I could have done a uh, super crop on it, but this stock... This stock is quite thick, and uh, I didn't really want to take the chance of snapping that off. Like down here, this this trunk is that's a big trunk, and uh, so yeah, it was well over my head, well over that fence, and probably within the last week, I've been able to pull it down about a foot and a half. I'm not sure if that's enough, but I'll be definitely keep an eye on it definitely filled out i wish i could have kept that up because that looked just like a, a beautiful christmas tree yeah it's raining right now so uh it's been raining all day and it's going to rain all day tomorrow this is uh this is monday right now so i decided i better get some footage here while i can while it's only raining a little bit so that's it for the outside i still have to get down there clean out a little bit underneath uh, especially around the back here Because as I pulled the plant down, of course, all the stuff that was on this, all the stuff that was on the side is now pointing down. And uh, I want to clean up this area really good and uh, make sure we get lots of airflow in there and try to prevent uh, bugs and mold and mildew issues by having lots of airflow through there. So that's it for now, guys. I'm going to head back in because it's starting to rain a little bit harder. Okay, so now that we've seen the outside freak show and the inside freak shows and harvested all the blue cheese, the last thing we have to do is we got to transplant these strawberry kush plants that I have going here. Uh, now, they're pretty much a month old at this point. Normally, I would have transplanted them uh, a couple of weeks ago, but I was waiting on some equipment and um, I've got most of that equipment in now so today is the day we've got to get these into their final homes what I'm gonna do I have four here I'm gonna plant two into these pots here which contain Promix HP with mycorrhiza and I also added some Harvest Hero enhanced perlite mix for just a little bit of extra silica and then I used the Gaia Green dry amendment nutrients in there mixed it all up so we have an organic mix here and uh, we're gonna be planting two in here and we'll also be planting two in my deep water culture buckets so first off before we look at the uh, hydroponic bucket let's go ahead and get two of them planted into these pots and get that out of the way that shouldn't take long at all okay so uh, I got these pots ready a bit ago and uh, got them all nice and moist so that we can get those organic nutrients activated and we get the microbes to start breaking that down so uh let's go ahead and grab one of these plants okay so here we have one here and we're just going to go ahead and pop it in that hole now they've been in here for a month as i said so they should have plenty of roots, which they do. Lots of roots there. Uh, they're ready to expand, though. They they want to get into a big pot. So who are we to stop them any longer? Like I said, I normally I would have these already planted a couple of weeks ago. So there we go simple as that now i am going to pop a couple of these bottom leaves off here that uh, are kind of down into the soil a little bit or just in the way i'm also while i'm here i don't want to put too much stress on them right now but i'm also going to 
take off a couple of these bigger leaves up here because they're blocking half of the plant and uh, I want to make sure I get light to all those all those different nodes right from the start so we're just gonna go right like that there now next week there's a good possibility that I'm gonna top it and also do maybe some LST to it um, but we're gonna leave it there for now and probably by next week we'll also have to top this top this bucket up so we'll set this one down grab the other one and we're just gonna do the same thing super quick he's a little bit dry there in the middle so I will water a little bit more here after the uh, after the video just to make sure everything is nice and settled in there so we'll go ahead and grab this one same thing we're just gonna squeeze a little bit around here turn it upside down pop it out another nice set of roots a little bit brown normally they're a bit whiter than that uh, but I think it's just uh, just being in those little solo cups and I may have kept them a little bit wet the last few days uh, which is why you might be seeing a little bit of browning there but once we get them into these pots they're gonna blow up there's no doubt in my mind that they will take right off uh, it seems to be a very very hardy strain uh, these are from ilovegrowingmarijuana.com uh, I do have a link down in my link tree for them I can't put a direct link because because uh, YouTube doesn't like that now there we go and uh, she's a little bit uh, all kind of congested into one little spot here but now that she's in her pot and we get to let her stretch out she should fill out pretty good so we'll set this one down and then I will show you my deep water culture bucket okay so here we have it we have a two bucket hydroponic deep water culture set up here uh, I did buy the four bucket system but I decided to only use two being new to deep water culture I didn't want to go too far into it first off uh, got to learn the ropes first so I decided to go with just a simple two bucket system uh, I have the other bucket upside down there just to put the pump on and I also have another spare bucket that I will be using I think it'll be much easier to use that to do water changes so when I do water changes I can just get the uh, the new bucket set up bring it in lift the plant out lift the top and the plant out move the old bucket out new bucket in clean that bucket and uh, so on and so forth I think it'd be a lot easier to have that spare bucket so I have everything here housed in in a Mars Hydro 2x4 tent with a Mars Hydro 6 inch exhaust and carbon filter and I have the new uh, updated Mars Hydro TSL 2000 which I just got in yesterday uh, so I got a chance to uh, try this out now they've made quite a few changes to this light the casing is powder coat white for a better spread of light they've also increased the angles on the sides for a more even par distribution uh, they have two drivers now uh, these are Mars Hydro's drivers that are made specifically for Mars Hydro, 150 watts each. So we have a 300 watt light here. And of course we have the dimmer and on off switch. Now let's take a look under the hood here. Now they did spread out. Now this is on the dimmest it will go. And this is still quite bright for me. They did spread out the light, the diodes. So... They have a more even distribution. You can see in the middle there's quite a gap in between lights and when you get to the edges uh, they're closer together. Same as down on the ends here. You can see how close they are. That's all strategic. Uh, that is so that the middle of your tent is going to get the same amount of par or close to it as what the edges get uh, in your 2x4 tent. So they've spread those out a little bit more. Uh, you can see the different colored diodes. We have the uh, reds, we have the warm whites, 
and the uh, white lights and also right here we can see the uh, IR lights everything the plant needs from start to finish is in this light okay so let's uh, let's take this light and we're gonna crank her up here so we're gonna turn it from minimum up to 25 up to 50 75 and 100 so these cameras are so good at uh, compensating for that light difference that it's hard to see with these uh, these cameras but uh, super bright light it's it's covering every inch of this light no problem so if you're interested in starting another grow up Mars Hydro does have kits uh, where you could get say the 2x4 tent with the Mars Hydro TSL 2000 along with a 4 inch exhaust fan with carbon filter also comes with a trellis net uh, a timer so that you can set your lights comes with fabric pots a humidity and temperature uh, reader um, pretty much the only thing you would need is your seeds your grow medium and uh, a fan to move the air around and your nutrients uh, the rest of it is in one of Mars Hydro's all-in-one grow tent kits so uh, feel free to check them out I have a link in the description you can also use code BWARD for a discount at checkout. Let's look a little closer here at the deep water culture buckets here. Very simple, it has the top with the uh, the basket here that we'll be planting the plant in. Now this was for a four bucket system, so they gave me a pump with four outlets. I just put two air stones in each one. More air is, is definitely gonna benefit them. Um, so there's a couple air stones down there working away, so. That will give them the air that they need while the roots are growing in nutrient rich water. Now on this side I also have something else hooked up. Now I'm going to ask for some expertise here in a minute. Um, from, from those of you that uh, are used to running this kind of system. Now I have, let's go over here to this side of the tent. I have what you call a water chiller uh, from Active Aqua. Now this is the most expensive thing I probably have bought for a grow in quite a long time. This was like 500 and some bucks. Now it has an inlet and an outlet and basically water, you pump water in one side and comes out the other side back into the bucket. And you set whatever, I have this set to 23 degrees Celsius, which you can see right here. And what happens if your water gets too warm, then it will kick on, the refrigeration will kick on and it will cool your water and then send it back to your bucket, which in turn will cool your bucket. I wanted to set it up to both buckets, and I tried doing that using connectors and hoses all to this one pump, but uh, didn't quite work out for me. One side always seemed to work a little bit better than the other, and I would end up emptying water from one bucket to the other till it overflowed, and uh, yeah, it was, uh, it wasn't a real fun time trying to get that to work, but uh, anybody that has experience with this, uh, can you let me know in the comments what is the easiest way to do that? To set up one water chiller for two reservoirs. Uh, if you can give me some tips on that, I would be much appreciated. Now these buckets also have this blue hose here that goes from top to bottom. This will show you the water level as it drops so that you're sure not to... Uh, all you have to do is check that to see where your water level is at. Makes it a little bit easier. And now for the fun part, we're gonna put plants in these guys. So why don't we go back to the work table and we will transplant our plants into a couple of these lids. All right, so what we have is some expanded clay balls. That's gonna be our grow media. Um, now, if I would have thought properly before I started these plants, I would have planted these in rock wool. Uh, I think from what I've seen, that seemed to be the best media to use, but too late. I already have it in Promix HP. So, how are we gonna get that into there without all the Promix falling down in? Well, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean a little bit of the Promix off to begin with, and then I think there's enough of a root ball there that uh, we should be okay by just putting the clay balls around it. So, uh, I'm gonna give that a try and I hope I don't mess this up but I might you never know I like trying new things so um, I had a hard time finding a video to show me how to do this although to be honest I really didn't look too hard 
so all right so we're just gonna take off a little bit of the the pro mix here I don't want to mess up the roots too bad actually that that's pretty darn solid I think if I plant it in just like that just like that I think she'll be fine yeah I mean that's pretty that's pretty solid root ball so I think what we'll do is I put a layer of these in here for that to sit on and I'm gonna put that right in there almost too high I think uh, I'm gonna take it out I'm gonna see if I can get just a little bit more off the top here kind of break the top up a little bit without hurting the structure of that uh, root ball too much just a little bit let's try that All right, that's gonna have to do. What I'm gonna do is just go around, pack these pellets in here, these little clay balls. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna rely on the OGs out there to tell me if I've seriously fucked up or. It, uh, with any of this process along the way feel free to step in guys and uh, and tell me what you think and I really like to have okay I'm gonna take that out I'm gonna leave the I'm gonna leave the clay balls off of the bottom all together and just set it down like that and then put it up better to me and I think before too long I think the roots will be down into the water and uh, we'll have that gap of that air gap anyway and I think that'll work just fine now before I take this over I'm also gonna do the same thing with these big With these bigger leaves here and get rid of these open that plant up a bit okay so I'm gonna get the other one put in and uh, I'll see you back over in the tent once we get them all settled okay so there we are we have the two strawberry kush planted in the hydro buckets and uh, water chiller in one on the right side and none in the other for now. So the nutrient solution underneath there is around 23, 24 degrees anyway. It's much cooler today than it has been and it looks like the rest of the week looks like it's gonna be the same, not too bad. Um, so we got 20, 23, 24 degrees temperature in the buckets. I'm gonna show you the nutrients when I get back to the other tent. Um, I have a pH of 6.1 and I have a PPM of around 540 is what it came out to with adding the nutrients at the levels that the bottles say. So let's go back into the other tent and uh, I'll show you what nutrients I'm using on this. Okay, so this is what I'll be using for this run. Uh, I bought these a while ago, probably over a year ago. Uh, I was planning on using it with my with my auto pot system. Oh, but another company sponsored that grow and gave me nutrients for it. So uh, these have been on my shelf for a while. I just got these at my local grow shop, uh, Valley Hydroponics. Big shout out to them. But yeah, this is what I'm using. Just going by the chart on the back, uh, three part series. We got the grow, we got the micro, and we got the bloom. So with adding that, and a little bit of pH down. We have the pH at 6.1 with a PPM of right around 540. Okay guys, so uh, yeah, we got a lot done in this video. 
Um, really looking forward to that deep water culture grow. See how we make out on that one. Also, of course, looking forward to the outside freak show. Man, that thing just, it's still going. It's, it's still growing. It'd probably be around eight feet high if I hadn't pulled it down. And she hasn't even started to hit flower yet. So once it goes into its flower stretch, you know, there's at least a couple more feet there, if not more. So, um, yeah, so that'll be a fun one to watch as she starts to flower. And I'm definitely going to be flipping these inside freak shows next week. So uh, come back for that as well. So that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below. And we'll see you on the next one. Happy growing.